Okay, everybody, welcome back. And uh, I know you think that's kind of funny, the my little warning there about being offended, uh, but, but I'm actually serious. Uh, this video is gonna offend somebody, um, and that's okay because facts are facts, whether it hurts your feelings or not. And uh, it's important as pet parents that we have the facts and aren't just being uh, tossed about by uh, marketing. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, you really should go back and look at that because this is an extension pretty much of that same thought. The question I asked last, last video was what? What's most important to your pet's health? The nutrients in the diet or the ingredients going into the diet? And uh, I asked that, at, used to ask that at every seminar I did in front of veterinarians and technicians. Most of them kind of knew. Every now and then maybe we could get into, into a debate. But the point is, it's the nutrients. The root word of nutrition is nutrients, okay? So I want you to think about it. I wish I had a, a, something to use, but imagine a kibble. We're gonna talk about just, just a kibble, okay? You could use a can, I suppose, but let's just use a kibble. Most people um, are, are just inundated with marketing as far as ingredients. And the thing, what ingredients go into this kibble? I'm here to tell you, you need to think about that totally opposite. What you need to do is think about that kibble and what you are doing, whether you realize it or not, you're trusting that the company you're buying that kibble from, okay, every one of those, <laughs> those little kibbles, that they have the expertise and the experience and the right people and the equipment and everything else, that they can make sure that within that kibble, the 55 some odd nutrients that your dog needs every day, this would be for cats as well, um, that that's in that kibble. And not just that they're in there at minimum levels like the government uh, demands, but that they're actually balanced and formulated together because different ingredients act on other ingredients. So it, it, it takes more than a nutritionist, it takes a chemist, it takes, well, many actually, <laughs> and it takes a facility that can do all that. It's a pretty amazing, when you think about it, I want you to think about this because you probably haven't thought of it this way, but when you buy that kibble, that's what you're buying. You're buying all those nutrients have to be totally balanced each and every time you buy that food. Who can do that? Not everybody can do that. People can make food, you know, just like grandma makes a Thanksgiving dinner or Easter dinner we just had, um, but that's different. This is a total complete diet. All those 50, 55 nutrients all optimally balanced for the health of that animal or in some cases to actually manage some of those diseases they have. That's what you're trusting. Do you hear that marketing in any way, shape or form from pet food marketers? All you hear is ingredients, this ingredient, that ingredient. This diet has fresh meat. This diet has meat meal. This diet has byproducts. This diet has corn, God forbid, okay? So what? That didn't tell me a darn thing about the food. We talked about this last time. How do I know that that meat meal or chicken meal or that byproduct meal is actually a, a good source and pure, giving me protein and not a bunch of junk, okay? And, and I'm not gonna get into the AFCO definitions because those AFCO definitions are just kind of like minimums. They're just saying, here's the minimum standard. You're allowed to put a bunch of junk in here if that's the kind of company you run, okay? You, you can get away with that. But how do I know if you're doing that or not? And I told you last time, okay? So if you haven't watched that video, go, go, go back and watch it. Show me the nutrients. Just like show me the money, show me the nutrients because you can't hide behind your nutrients. And if you've got a meat meal, and I look at your mineral content and it's twice that of any other food or the ones that we know are good foods made by nutritionists and chemists, guess what? That ex those excess minerals, that's what could potentially harm my pet, especially as they get older. And what it tells me is you're buying junk ingredients. I don't care what your ingredient panel says. It doesn't matter what your ingredient panel says. We talked about that in another video. That's all manipulation. That's all just playing with names. Show me the nutrients and I'll know real quick, hey, that food company, they know what they're doing and they're committed to the health of my pet. I don't have to look at ingredient panels. There's a great vet that has a channel on here. I don't need to promote her because she's got <laughs> thousands of views, but she's awesome. She compares foods. She never looks at the ingredient panel. Why? Because she knows it's, it's just a game. It's just a silly game that the marketers use. Show me the nutrients. 
you find me a food out there that is actually promoting their product based on the nutrients and send me a screenshot because I'd love to see it because I can't think of a single one. Why? Because the consumer is so been, been sent in that direction of ingredients and it's really a shame. So I want you to kind of think of it this way. Uh, there's two pet food manufacturers and they go into business and uh, let's even say they're jumping into the game now, okay? And there's one food company that has nutritionists, board certified veterinary nutritionists and chemists and, and their own plant here in America. And they decide we're gonna make diets that have optimal nutrient levels, those 50 some odd nutrients uh, and we're going to put that in a kibble form or a can form or whatever form they want, okay? Um, they're going to go out and they're going to find the ingredients that are going to deliver that nutrient profile. Does that make sense? They're going to go out and find meat sources and grains and carbohydrates and, and um, uh, they, they could go get a synthetic... Um, um, vitamin mineral uh, compound. Uh, we'll, we'll have to talk about that in a separate video, but they, they can do all that. In other words, here's the nutrient profile that we want to make sure when that dog eats it, that they get all this nutrition. Okay, and we can test. We have the facilities to test blood serum levels, all that to make sure that it's being delivered to that animal. So let's go out and get the ingredients that are going to deliver that. Okay, that makes total sense, doesn't it? Is that actually what pet food companies are doing now? In my opinion, and I think the evidence is pretty clear, not at all. It's a little different now. Now it's, I have a marketing group and we decide, wow, there's lots of money in pet food. People are passionate about pet food and they're spending gobs of money on pet food. Let's go ahead and look at what do we need to do to make our food? Well, the first thing we need to do is find ingredients that sell, ingredients that sound really good. I'm calling them glamour ingredients. And that's really the way to look at it, that they're glamorous, they sound great, and guess what? I'm going to spend more money on those ingredients because I've been programmed to believe that they're actually better for my animal. Just watched a video today, and the, the person, I know they mean well, so I don't mean to offend anybody, but they're, again, they're playing that, well, this is meat meal, that's a low-quality ingredient, and this is fresh meat, so that's a high-quality ingredient. Really? And you're basing that on what? your emotions, your feelings, uh, what the marketers have told you. Show me the nutrients and I'll tell you which one is high quality and which one's not. Remember, fresh meat, it's got water in it. Meat meal, it's dry. Which one's high quality? I have no idea till you show me the calcium and phosphorus levels. And again, most foods, try to, try to find that. You, oh, we'll send you that if you request it. Just look at the pretty pictures of, of chicken and all this other stuff here. So that's what's going on. You're not getting food companies anymore that are saying, here's the ingredients needed to deliver this nutrient profile. Now it's what ingredients do I have to come up with that's going to get Mrs. Jones to really like this food? Go back to my first or second video on the, the history of marketing. What did those marketers do? Oh, you need chicken as the first ingredient. You need grain free. You need no corn. You need this and that. Here's that fox in that border collie outfit, just taking those sheep over here, taking those sheep over there. Oh, now and now kibble is bad. Kibble's killing your animal. You know, it's 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 poison. And and what is all that? The umbrella of all that really is shame. You've got pet food marketers that are doing a great job of shaming you into spending tons of money on foods that you don't even know if they're healthy. Again, I, I, I'm a glutton for punishment. I go to these videos and then I read the, the comments and people, I feel so bad I can't afford this food. And I'm looking at this one and that one and, and the, like it's the blind leading the blind and it's really aggravating. And I'm sorry if I'm offending people, but sorry, that's the, the truth is you're not helping your animal. And, and the sad thing is, I'm kind of getting on a tangent here, but I'm really emotional about this stuff. It used to be grocery foods were pretty low quality food. And then you had your premium foods and everybody should be feeding premium if you could afford it. And it was affordable back then, okay? It was more money than grocery, but it was still affordable. Now there are foods out there that cost more than even the veterinary diets that you'd, uh, you would get at a veterinarian. Even way more than that. $5 a can and, and 
over $100 for a bag in these boutique pet stores. And, and, and I love how the attitude is, oh, you buy your food at Petco or PetSmart? Oh, okay. You know, boy, she buys her food at PetSmart. That's the attitude because those brands, well, they're, you know, they're mass market. You, you need to go to, you know, Jim Bob's little boutique or Susie Q's little boutique pet store or pet boutique. And they have a food there that the chicken in that food comes from Jim Bob's farm down the street and or down the road, not a street, down the road. And they're happy chickens. And, and we we outsource from all these wonderful places. And that's what goes in the food. Oh, don't I feel wonderful. Okay, now, hey, I'm, I'm all for non-caged chickens and all that kind of stuff. So I don't mean to make fun of that. But the point is, can we get back to what would be the healthiest for my dog to stay alive the longest instead of all this ridiculous fluff that people are, are consumed by? By who? By pet food manufacturers who know how to get to your heart. They've, they're ignoring your head. They're not even dealing with intellect anymore. It's all an emotion thing now. And it drives me absolutely nuts. <laughs> There's actually a, a new company out there, went to their website, saw one of their videos, and they're saying, oh, we have, it's a, a therapeutic line for if your dog has kidney disease or heart disease, that kind of thing. And they're unique, I will give them that. I have not looked at their nutrient levels, so I'm just gonna trust that they've done a good job of coming up with a nutrient level to deal with renal disease, kidney disease, okay? but they're using glamour ingredients okay only fresh real ingredients from you know happy family farms and and where there's rainbows every day and blah 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 and, and, and pixie dust and all this kind of stuff okay because that's just so much healthier than those other companies okay i went to their website i'm not kidding here they only sell one pound bags of their dog food, not cat food, dog food, one pound bags. You know how much that one pound bag was? $39.99. $39.99, Mrs. Jones has to pay for her poor dog that has kidney disease because she's been shamed into the idea that if you go buy that therapeutic food at the vet, oh, that's just full of garbage and, and awful things. You don't want to feed that. No, 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 you want to feed this food because it has real ingredients. It's going to make you feel really good while you go broke. And let's face it, $40 a pound of dog food. I don't know about you. I love my dogs, but that would be a little rough. That's, that's where we're at. That's, that's probably the epitome of where this is going. And it just makes me nuts. It really does. So, um, let's, I need to take a break there and, and get back into this. Okay, I've calmed down now. So let me address um, one, one myth out there that little companies, a little dog food company can use really high quality ingredients because they're small and they can get from, again, you know, Jim Bob's farm down the, down the road and they can, you know, just buy from all these local places. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, Mayberry. It just sounds, it sounds great. And, and maybe they're doing their very best. But you could question, what about consistency? You're buying from all these different places. What happens when Jim Bob runs out of eggs or, you know, or, or the meat supplier, that small meat supplier all of a sudden has issues, whatever. Um, you know, that can happen. But the myth is that a big food company or middle-sized food company that's, you know, mass producing, let's say, um, that they don't buy quality ingredients because they're too big. They, they can't afford it. Well, that's kind of silly and it's actually the opposite. I met a buyer from a major pet food manufacturer once and he said, it was kind of funny. He said, you know, all those highfalutin nutritionists that go on the lecture tours and go all over the world, they're not the heroes of, of the story. I'm the hero because I'm the buyer. I'm the guy that goes out and buys the ingredients and finds the suppliers. And if you think about it, if you're large enough, now if you're interested in, in the highest quality corn gluten meal and meat meal and, and, and byproducts and, you know, just name it, whatever the ingredients are. If you're large enough, you get to go to suppliers and say, hey, look, you give me the best stuff you have and we'll agree on a price and we'll buy it from you every time. I mean, we'll buy it all. 
You know, we will, we will take care of you. you. You produce that high quality that we come back and we'll test it at our facility before it gets off the, unloaded off the train cars or, or however, trucks, whatever. We will test it to make sure it's the standard that we demand. But as long as it is, we'll buy everything you have every year. That's clout. That, that allows that food company, they're big enough to get high quality ingredients at a really good price because they're that big. If you're a supplier and you know, hey, I'm all set. I don't have to go look for customers. They buy it every year. They buy everything I make. And as long as my uh, uh, quality is there, I'm set. So in a way, it's a large company. If they're committed to the quality ingredients that they demand for their diets, a good example would be uh, meat meals, the mineral content that I was talking about before. Uh, in cat foods, you need the highest quality meat meals because mineral excesses cats are more um, sensitive to than dogs. So the highest quality meat meals are going to go in a cat food. It's not because we like cats better than dogs or anything. It's just, again, we have to go with what the nutrients are, right? So that little little pet food uh, manufacturer, God bless them, and, and they're, they're doing their best, they do not have the clout to get a good price on really high quality ingredients. It's actually the larger companies that can go in and do that. Now again, if that food company isn't interested in the highest quality ingredients, there's plenty that aren't, they're going to buy the lower grade stuff. But uh, I thought that was really interesting, and I met that guy, it's been years now, but uh, it's true. I mean, it's the ingredients that that's, you need those if you're going to deliver the right nutrients. So uh, I'm going to stop here. Sorry if this video is a little more ranting, but I'm, I'm hoping there was educational stuff in there. And uh, when we come back, we're going to look at, we looked at, uh, you know, the idea of glamour ingredients. Now we're going to look at the nose because, and somebody even asked that I would address this. Let's look at the no corn, wheat, and soy. Okay, I think that's really important. It fits in everything we're saying here and uh, really kind of drives the point home. So again, thanks everybody. I am having a blast. This is really a lot of fun. I, I've, I've missed my veterinarians and my techs and, and, and all that. So uh, this has really been fun and I appreciate everybody, uh, the encouragement and, and subscriptions. Please subscribe and uh, check out some of the other videos. I, I, they all kind of just keep, keep going on. Um, I don't have any script or... I guess you could tell. So anyway, I'll shut up. You guys take care. Bye.